Hey, what is up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and welcome to We Are Film and today I'm going to be talking about some of the C200 footage that we shot and sort of a way that you can get a nice basic correction. I think a lot of people don't understand what it needs to or what it takes to go into making a basic correction on your footage and making sure that everything is balanced before you start grading. One of the things that I see quite often is people will jump in and they'll start adding crazy LUTs and they'll just go nuts on the grade before they've actually corrected the footage. And I think it's also difficult to understand what is correcting the footage and how can you do that. Now, of course, we shot in the C200, which does shoot log and, uh, excuse me, log and raw. We shot this in raw, and then I just outputted this to ProRes 444, 4444, 4, 4, whatever it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so it's basically the highest, you know, thing you can do um, out of the camera. And, you know, you want to get a lot of it right in camera. So we were doing this kind of really contrasty, wanted to make sure it was kind of like this into shooting into shadow type deal. But anyway, so let's jump into actually correcting this footage. Now, the first thing I like to do is, and DaVinci Resolve I like to add a new node, which is, whoops, Alt-S, if I can see what I'm doing. Alt-S, and then I like to do a color space transformation. Uh, first thing is, this is GPU accelerated, and in my case, that works. And we're in the Canon Cinema gamut, C-Log3. Output 709, because we're just going to do 709 for now. Okay, so you slap this on, and a lot of people are like, all right, cool, good to go. Well, the biggest problem is that this is compressing it to a Rec. 709 color space, and we know we have all that extra information. I mean, look how much more shadow detail, highlight detail we have. So that's not good. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on luminance mapping. So that obviously helps us out quite a bit, and you can see when I turn that on and off, it flattens right over there. I don't know if you can see that. Our scopes, watch when I turn that luminance mapping on. Boom, it brings everything down, and that makes a huge difference right off the bat. Now, one of the things that I can see, but if we want to sort of make sure this is true, go to the parades, and we can kind of tell, although it's not as apparent in the parades, but there is definitely a more of a green vibe going on here. Uh, the waveform kind of shows the green and yellows up here a little bit higher. You can see it right there in particular. Uh, so we want to get rid of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this little tab over here, and we're going to do tint. Now, if you bring it left and right, you can see it's pink. Now, we're going to add just a touch where those feel just about even, right about there. And you can see on the scopes here that it actually shows that now they're even. One thing I do notice is there's a little more green in the shadows. Now, obviously, that plant is there. Um, but one thing we can do to kind of fix this is we can go to our shadow here, which is our lift, and we can ever so slightly pull that up. So I just barely, barely slid that up towards the pink. Um, might have even gone a little too far, to be honest. That's probably good right there. I mean, we're talking just a hair. Um, but right now, if we turn this on and off, that was our original, and that's our corrected. So we see we added the pink back in. We balanced those colors out, um, and it looks a lot better already. Cool. So one of the other things I want to do now is I want to add contrast and really balance out the levels of the shot. So it's nice and contrasty to where we want, but we're also not doing it, you know, too hardcore. So a great thing that I like to do to sort of see this is I click Alt S and I have this plugin called False Color. Now, to be honest with you, I cannot remember if this is paid or if this was free. <laughs> I don't remember. Um... Whatever it is, it was worth it because I did purchase this with my own money if I did pay for it. If not, it's free, then it's, it's free. Um, but the great thing about this is this actually shows you a false color scale, um, which I think is really great for figuring out contrast. Now, I prefer to use the Atomos. Uh, it just seems to be the easiest one, at least for me, to visualize. Uh, I don't know. It's just better that way. So I, in this type of high key scenario, I don't mind if this side of his face is underexposed. What I want to make sure is that the brightest part of his face is pretty much at around this 60, you know, 50 to 60 IRE, depending on where you like to sit and, you know, do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this and I'm going to add some contrast by clicking this one here and contrast. So we can see that it starts to bring more here. Now, the problem is I can tell my highs are still kind of high over here. So I'm going to bring those down. But what you can see is we start to lose it on his face. So I'm going to bring the mids back up and then bring the shadows back down. So let's t let's get off this and see what it looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, 
we can see again it's probably slightly underexposed on his face so what, okay so we're gonna click on the curves here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this spot in his face and you can see that that immediately makes a point here on our uh, curve now what I'm also gonna do is I'm also gonna click a point over here that's not completely black but it's pretty dark and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up just on that ever so slightly to make sure that's in now I'm also gonna add another point over here because that's pretty bright and we want to keep that so we're gonna pull that down and then we're gonna bring that up just a touch maybe into the left perfect so that feels pretty good that feels nice and contrasty and if we check our false color here oh, let's go back to that uh, we can see that we have a lot of underexposed but we're pretty close to that 50 almost at 60 marks that's just about where we want to be and where I kind of like it um, typically I prefer to underexpose slightly skin uh, it's just a personal preference thing I mean you got guys like Brad for young who underexpose skin quite a bit uh, cool now I am seeing a little bit of pink in those highlights just a touch too much for my liking so I'm gonna come here to the gain and I'm gonna pull that back ever so slightly um, we're talking just minuscule amounts right there, uh, but that looks a little bit better. It just makes it, I don't know, just, just makes it a little bit more natural, but we're still not getting that hardcore green. So to kind of quick see what we've done so far, I'm going to get rid of this false color now. To see what we've done, if we turn this off, we can see what a difference that is already. And this is what a correction is. We're adding back in the contrast that we originally saw in camera and that we wanted. We're fixing the colors so everything's more balanced. Um, actually, we probably could pull the reds just a touch out of the... So actually, you know what we'll do? Whoops. We're going to select just the red, uh, red channel here. We'll pull that ever so slightly down. We're going to bring it down in the shadows here. All right, that feels pretty natural. So just a hair. Uh, I think we went a little too hard on the, the white balance at first. Um, that feels a lot more natural now. But you can see what a difference that is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another node. And now I'm actually going to add a grading LUT. So I'm going to use this LUT called... Uh, it, it's from uh, LUTify Marope. I don't know. It looks good. So you can see that we added this LUT now to our original footage. Now you may be like, well, okay, that looks pretty good. And it does, it doesn't look bad. But you can see now if we add our original corrections to it, it looks that much better. Now maybe this is too much contrast for you and this is too much. And what I like to do typically on these LUTs is I like to go, uh, where is it, right here to this little, this little person and a kind of transparent background. And I like to turn the key output down. So in this case, we're going to turn it down to like 75 so that's about 75%. So you can see that again, if I were to bring this down to like 40%, it's much less. And then 0%, it's not on there at all. Obviously 100%, we don't want to go that far. But actually maybe something like the 50% looks really nice. So again, let's kind of jump back here. So this is our original footage. Uh, and again, I always like to do the corrections before the 709. I think it just looks better and you're working with the actual... Um, log. So before Rec 709, or this is just the conversion of Rec 709, this is our correction, and then this is our LUT on top of that. Now, if you're someone who doesn't like that much contrast, maybe you don't really want that much, um, you could come back here and you could pull the contrast back just a little bit back to one or so. Um, and then if you add the LUT, you get a little bit more of that contrast. That's a style choice. Again, it's totally up to you. Um, but yeah, so that was a pretty quick correction and a little bit of a grade here with that LUT on uh, this C200 footage. Now, I mean, you might go in and you could always dial in something where you're pulling, um, you know, like when you put the LUT on, maybe you notice that like this up here gets a little bit too pink now with that LUT. So maybe pull that back. That's a little too green, something like that. Um, another thing we could do, actually, you know, I'm going to reset that. Another thing we could do is kind of go to, where is it, our luminance versus saturation. This is a really, really great curve right here because what this does, and I like to make two points kind of near the end, is this actually is the saturation over the course of your luminance. Now, typically, when something is black, there is complete lack of color. So we're going to pull this down because that's going to desaturate everything that is absolutely black. And same up here in the highlights or the whites, we can pull everything down that is pure white so that it is not being affected by any color. And you could move that in if you want. 
So you could pull it like way in, but this is just changing the saturation of uh, anything in that. Now, obviously this is pretty far over, whoops. So if we wanted to, we can make a second point and I can show you this a little bit better. So now anything that is pure white uh, or very, very light has zero saturation. Um, you know, that's up to you. Uh, that's whatever you want to do, but I think we're going to go a little less than that. Uh, I still like to have a little bit of saturation there. Cool. Um, actually, maybe we'll turn this back up just a touch. I think I did like it a little bit more intense. And again, me personally, I like it slightly more contrasty. So in my case, I would probably pull down in the curves that something like there and then pull the highlights down maybe even more if I can. Um, that's, you know, a little more stylized, but yeah. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions down below on part of the correction or how you should be correcting something or shouldn't be. Uh, you know, there's really no right or wrong way to color grading and color correction in general. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.